Anyway, now that we're talking about the lineup of speakers, uh, I think it's time to introduce the very first speaker. So today with us, we've got Daniel Walton, and it's only fitting that uh, since he's going to be opening the skills part of uh, the symposium, we have the National Secretary of uh, the Australian Workers' Union. Uh, Daniel has many, many and honorifics, um, and I'm not going to list all of them. It's a very impressive list. Uh, but it suffices to say that Daniel has very good oversight and knowledge about current Australian skill base, and also an understanding of how we can leverage the skill base for future nuclear opportunities. So let's hear more from Daniel. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Uh, well, thanks very much, everyone. It's a uh, lovely pleasure to be here, and I do want to start off by also acknowledging the traditional owners of the lands on which we meet and pay my respects to elders past, present, uh, and emerging. Uh, for any of you that had the time uh, to research of the list of speakers in advance, you're probably sitting here wondering, saying there's something quite odd with me um, standing up here. And for those of you that have checked out my Wikipedia page, I am not a professional powerlifter nor a professional rugby player, but I choose not to update either of those items. Uh, but they remain there um, today. And it is nice to be meeting up here. It's where I did start my MBA. And so for the uh, lecturers and professors in the room, I will take uh, this address as some credits towards eventually getting back in to finish that in due course. So thank you again. Um, the topic for me to cover off today is around skills, but um, quite frankly, I think there's probably a little bit more that we can bring to that discussion given the recent political change, the current energy debates, uh, and essentially where the industry sits as we see it and what the opportunities are um, going forward. So I do appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to give a bit of uh, a short talk today. And so for those of you who might be wondering, the Australian Workers' Union has been around for a long time now. We were established in 1886. We were born off the back uh, of some shearers um, in Ballarat. Five years later, we were involved in setting up the Australian Labor Party under a tree of knowledge, which is a, a place in Bark Holden in Queensland. So our union's connection and close proximity with the Australian Labor Party has existed for a long period of time uh, for very real reasons. We were involved in setting up and establishing it for better or for worse, as it has been over many, many years. Um, our union represents a lot of workers, primarily uh, we're called a general union. We look after people in a lot of blue collar roles. Um, and our union is heavily exposed in the energy sector, notwithstanding in coal uh, mining or coal generation. Uh, but if you look at it in terms of outside of those areas in energy intensive trade exposed industries, if you look at it in terms of steel, aluminium, if you look in terms of glass, if you look at it in terms of bricks, cement, chemicals, whatever it might be, those are the areas in which we operate. And the reason uh, we're here today is our union uh, and myself personally have been very big advocators for this industry for a long period of time. And I would probably argue um, have uh, taken more hits up for Team Nuclear than pretty much most people in this room at a public level. Um, what I hope to do today is just present a bit of a view on why it's important for us to support the industry, what I think some of the opportunities are, and also some of the headwinds which are facing the industry, which we've spoken about um, more recently. Uh, if you look at it in terms of most of the industries that we operate and where our members work, they were by and large set up in industries that started with energy as a competitive advantage. Um, that competitive advantage has long since disappeared off our shores. And so for a lot of those workers and a lot of those industries now, they are looking to find opportunities to ensure that they have reliable baseload power generation at an affordable rate so that they can keep the doors open, and keep producing their products. Our ultimate goal, as everyone understands, is to try and reduce our carbon footprint, but in doing so in a way that ensures that those energy intensive businesses can continue to operate. So for a long period of time, going back many decades, we've always saw an opportunity for Australia to explore a nuclear pathway in this country. If you look beyond the crazy rhetoric, and I call it crazy on purpose because that is what it is, if you look in terms of the scaremongering and you look beyond that, then you can start to see an industry which can provide enormous solutions for the country, be it good quality jobs with high skilled workers, with decent paying conditions, which is the, the bedrock of the industry around the world, we can reduce our carbon footprint and we can provide enormous opportunities, again, as I said, for our energy intensive businesses on using the mix of intermittent, intermittent renewables 
with a firm solution as well. For us, it just seems like a logical pathway, but unfortunately, logic in a political sense doesn't really rate in the top 10. So we've been trying to push this agenda along to try and to try and point out the fact that we should broaden our horizons, we should look around the world, and we should try and find the opportunities to learn from abroad to bring back home. Um, for those of you who've heard me speak before, you'll know that I've grown up in the Sutherland Shire almost my entire life. Uh, and I like to say to people, I think I turned out okay. Um, uh, you can be the judge of that and you can put that as it might be a question for later perhaps. But I've grown up next to it and I know with friends whose parents um, are in the same footy team and in the soccer team, um, who we know through the school, whose parents work at Ansto, they've worked at the nuclear reactor and we've grown up alongside it and we've known people who work there. And the fear and scaremongering does not exist in our community. And so I've used that as to try and tackle the NIMBY, the not in my backyard arguments, which continue to operate right across the board and say that we can have it in our backyard. There are opportunities already that exist with the reactor there. And then if we look to develop a nuclear energy capacity in this country, then we've said, I've said often, then have it in our backyard. Because the fear and concerns that exist do not operate in the Sutherland Shire. And for me, it seems like the perfect position to start it. These are just small little bits and pieces in working towards what is a difficult industry, what are difficult conversations to have. Um, just outside before, we're having the conversation about, well, how do we convince people? How do we bring people along in this journey to try and support the industry? And that is really difficult. And this is one of the messages that I wanted to bring. And I know starting off this conversation, don't interpret this in any way, shape or form as a defeatist message. This is just looking at the reality of the political landscape at the moment. Um, right across the board, headwinds are working against nuclear and there is huge amounts of money getting tipped in to other forms of renewables. The political net landscape in terms of the recent change of government could not make it more difficult for the industry to get set up and established other than a fairly substantial change with a defence led conversation around nuclear submarines. If it was not for that coming into effect, I would say it would be next to impossible to try and shift the dial on this. And the reason for that is I look at it purely through a political lens of the ALP. There are people who I have arguments with on a regular basis in the trade union movement um, and in the uh, broader Australian labour movement um, who assume that setting up nu a nuclear industry is essentially weaponising nuclear uh, bombs. Um, these are the same people who assume that we can't safely store nuclear waste, yet our members who work in the chemical industry produce some things that frankly you do not want anywhere near a thousand kilometres of you yet alone, they operate right next door to suburban areas. But the, the narrow-minded focus which has happened in these areas is confronting and it's frustrating, but that is the backdrop, unfortunately, which we have to deal with and we contend with. So what we're trying to do is press the dial to be able to say, yes, we should use the opportunity to build these sub-programs as an opportunity to explore nuclear energy development as well. We always say that you can't do that when you've got a backdrop of a prohibition on exploring any nuclear energy development in this country. How are you gonna get a whole lot of proponents to spend huge amounts of time investing in Australia with those bans in place? A testament is to how many people are coming along here brave enough to try and explore those opportunities. The two big opportunities I think the industry has got is this. Number one, there are some industries and some areas around the country um, who are struggling with transitions Latrobe Valley being number one, Hunter Valley potentially number two. Those should be seen as opportunities where there are workers in traditional industries in well-paid jobs that are looking to transition into long, stable, good jobs. The renewable industry has not provided that at this point in time and is unlikely to in the future. So it's an opportunity for the industry to try and work with those communities. And the second point I wanna to touch on is unionization. Now this might think about me making a plea for jobs. Our union will look after workers in the nuclear industry. So yes, I'll hand up and declare that conflict. Um, but there is an opportunity for the industry to come together and work as one. Right now, the industry does not work as one. You are working in a difficult environment to change the narrative at a public level, political level, and you're doing so with everyone trying to bid against each other. 
I've been to so many different nuclear events, nuclear conversations with different proponents, all trying to promote their technology above one another. Their solution's gonna be better. They've got opportunities for storage, for this, for that. People are not working together in a coordinated basis. The whole point of unionization is using collective strength to try and get a better outcome. That is the founding pr principles of trade unionism, the founding principles of what we stand for. And I think each and every one of you in the room with a collective view of wanting to end up in the same place would do so a lot better if you started working together more. So I'll leave it there and thanks so much for the opportunity to speak. Cheers.